Hi there, it's Sandy Almock, and today I am bringing you Create in Color with a very sweet stamp from MFT. I've stamped it off the bottom on my watercolor paper and taped the whole thing down onto a board, and I'm going to tip it up because I want to do a background on it. And this is going to be a really fun background to do for all your Christmas cards. Paint water around the whole thing. Use a small brush right around the image and then a big brush for the whole sky section. Get it nice and wet. And then use some nice, thick, pigmented color to paint into it and let the color move into the areas where the water is. You may need to take your small brush and go into some of those edges around the image because it's hard to see when you're painting with water whether or not you've gotten really tight in there. So you can do that as you start doing the painting of the background. But the gravity is carrying everything so it keeps moving and it's going to stay moving and not turn into blooms and blossoms. And the idea is to try to get a relatively even coating of paint over the whole thing. And I'm going to turn it around and let some of this color move down a little bit more. The top section is wetter than the bottom section. And notice it's not even either. You don't have to have it even in order to do this. It's a very forgiving technique. And then I'm going to take a packet of salt, just a regular old table salt packet. And I will ask your forgiveness for my camera zooming to my hand and to my paper and to my hand. It had a little schizophrenia here. And I'm going to just sprinkle the whole packet of salt onto my painting. The bottom section is a little drier, well, a lot drier than the top section. And some things I've learned recently in playing with salt and watercolor is the more even you want the texture to be, the more even you want the overall painting to be. So if I wanted that bottom section to have the same amount of reaction as the top, then I needed the bottom section to not be drier than the top. But on the bottom section, I got an interesting different texture than the top. So you can actually force different textures by the amount of water that you have on the page. If you have too much water, then Sometimes the whole thing just kind of turns into a puddle and you don't end up with any texture at all. So you have to have it, it the right balance. The paper still needs to be shiny, but not puddly. But I had a lot of shiny in that top center section. So it almost looks like big chunks of snowballs flying from the sky, whereas the bottom section looks more even. So it really depends on what kind of texture you want as far as how long you wait before you apply the salt. You also want to let it go completely. I am showing you a time lapse of just letting it go. I went and made lunch while it was happening so I wouldn't be tempted to come in and touch it and to fuss with it. I did not heat set it because if you heat set salt, it sticks heavily to the paper. Yeah, and then you're rubbing it off like crazy. It hurts your fingers, so you don't want to do that unless you really like to scratch the surface to try to get all of that off. But look at all that wonderful texture in the background. Isn't that great? I was trying to decide how strong I wanted my colors on the, the reindeer. So since I wasn't sure, I just used a baby wipe to dab it off. And then I decided, you know, I did like the stronger color, so I just painted it back in. And then I painted several layers of red over top of her dress because I wanted her dress to be really strong Depending on the colors that are in your background, you might want it stronger or you might want it weaker. If you have a really, really, really deep, rich, dark background, then having your image, your characters be on the lighter side might work better. So I wanted her to be a little darker, a little stronger color. So once it was dry, I just added another layer to it. It's a nice thing about watercolor that you can do. And another fun thing you could do would be to just do the watercolor background just on a plain sheet instead of having to paint around her and then die cut her out and stick her on. But I like the whole thing being one layer, so I'm kind of that weird person who will go through painting all those tiny details in order to get a one layer painting for a card. Add a little bit of gray for some of the white areas and dab some of that off and there is my finished card. Lots of fun, lots of fun to practice that kind of a background with. And if you're interested in more on salt, I did a video on my other, my own channel a couple days ago 
if you want to see more because there's a large painting that I did over there with that. And that's it for me. I will see you again next month. Take care, you guys. Have a great fall. I'll see you again.